ago, there was an upper world and a lower world. And in the upper world were all the things of Mother Earth, the trees, the hills, the animals, the birds, everything except the people. At that time, the people were spirits in the underworld. But one day, an entity took off her head and threw up into the sky, and it became the moon. So then the moon started having this effect on the earth, and that effect was so powerful that it reached into the underworld, and all of a sudden, the spirits became people. But they were in the underworld, and they had to somehow get up onto the upper world where Mother Earth was. So the people prayed, and a deer appeared to them, and the deer led them through the underworld. They went through rocks and crevices and mud and earth and all kinds of obstacles until they came to a portal that they could see above them was full of water. And so the deer started swimming up through the portal. So the people grabbed onto the deer and the deer grabbed onto the people and they were swimming and swimming up through that portal. At the same time, there was a water bird flying over on Mother Earth, flying over these springs. So the water bird dove into the water and grabbed the deer and grabbed the people and pulled them up onto the shores of Mother Earth. And that's how the people first came to be on Mother Earth. So we believe that that portal, that crevice, is the headwaters of the San Marcos River, which we call the Sacred Springs. We believe that because it's documented on a 4,000-year-old rock art painting that's near Comstock, Texas, where it shows four fountain springs on that rock painting. And there's a line that curves and hits right at that second spring and points to it as the creation site. So that's why we believe that that's the spring that we came out of. My name is Maria Rocha, and I'm the executive director of Indigenous Cultures Institute. I'm also a member of the Miyakan Garza tribe, which is my husband's tribe. I am Mario Garza. I'm from the Miyakan Garza tribe. It's a non-federally recognized tribe. One of the problems that we have in Texas, because of the unique history of Texas Indians, when the Texas became part of the Union, none of the Indians had any land left, so the United States did not have a need to recognize them, to, write a tr to sign a treaty with them and take away their land. So none of the original Texas Indians have federal recognition. The, the federal government has to say you're Indian to be, to be accepted or recognized as an Indian. All the rest of the Indians can say you're Indian, but if the white government doesn't say you're Indian, then you're not Indian. Well, the government has set up a process for groups of Indians to get federal recognition. However, it was set up intentionally not to recognize any more tribes. And the program right now is, has like a 20 to 30 year backlog. So if I was to, to apply tomorrow, I mean, I'm not going to be alive, you know, in 10, 20 years. So, you know, we'll never get federal recognition. <laughs> My wife and I started a nonprofit in 2006. Throughout our lives, we've worked in uh, bureaucratic jobs, right? And so we've had these volunteer experiences where we're working as volunteers doing this kind of work. But it's always with a nine to five job and then a few hours at night. So both of us retired and realized that this was our chance. When, when we started, our goal was just some schools and some institutions for lectures. So it was a very modest dream, but it was sort of like our way to be that difference, you know, make that difference. But when we went to an institution, there was an Aztec group there, and they came up to us and said, you know, we would love to start doing what you're doing, but dancing Aztec dances rather than giving lectures. What do you think? So we thought, well, we could, um, promote you and work with you, and then we 
there was another group that wanted the same thing, and before you knew it, we had a performances group going on. And then we would have somebody approach us about, they also did lectures, but couldn't kind of get out there, and could we help them with that? So we started a speaker's program. So we have 11 programs. The, the biggest one that we have is the uh, annual uh, two-day powwow. There are four directions, north, south, east, and west. And then there's some, some people that pray to six directions. They include the upward direction and the downward direction. And then, and I pray to seven directions, so I include the center. We do that to ask permission to be there. There, there are several smokes that we consider sacred and we use. The, the one that we use at, at, over there at the, at the springs is sage. But we also use, uh, in, in other events, other parts, we use tobacco. We use uh, sweet grass. And we, uh, you know, the, when something burns, the smoke goes, goes up. So we ask the, the, that to take, the, to take our prayers up to, the, to creation. Like in the powwow, you have, we have, we have two drums. One is the northern drum, and the other one is the south, is called the southern drum. The northern, the northern drum sings higher pitch and faster. And the southern, the southern drum sings with a lower pitch and a slower beat. In our powwow, we have two types of dancers. We have the, the, the traditional North American dancers, the women, the buckskin dancers, the shaw dancers, the jingle dance and all that. The ones that have like long ribbons, they're called the grass dancers. But then in our powwow, it's different than other powwows because we also have danzantes. The danzantes being what some people call the, the Aztec dancers. <laughs> Kind of nervous, but as soon as I start dancing, it feels like nobody's there watching me and I'm just trying to do, I imagine myself doing my practice without anybody watching me. That's why I like to do grass dance. So today I'm here supporting my son. He's a grass dancer. Uh, he competes um, at every powwow. I do uh, jingle dress, but I don't compete. I just uh, do it for the people. I do it for my family. Um, it's like I'm connected to my family and I'm connected to um, you know my elders. Every time I put on my jingle dress and every time I see my son dancing, it just emits so much pride in me just to see them out there still representing their culture. I decided to dance because um, I thought it looked nice, so I danced because of that, and yeah. yeah I just watched my two youngest uh, dance, and it made my heart swell up with pride because I see them continue, and then I hope that they continue that into their adult years and even have their kids out here. There's not anybody from any walk of life that couldn't take something special away, a memory or a, a small regalia item or, you know, even if it's arrow, there's something for everybody on every walk of life to come and experience this. They can take something away. I hope it grows a lot, a lot larger. There are two perspectives that are important. One is when people approach our culture and want to um, use it to make money or to, um, to improve themselves individually as people, to appropriate our culture is not useful to anybody. But when you approach our culture in terms of learning so that we can all have a relationship, so that we can all better humankind, then that's a welcome type of um, intrusion because it's not an intrusion that's negative, it's there for a purpose. It's to, to gain knowledge, to make things better, to learn how to toil the soil, to learn how to not poison the air, to learn how to take care of the water. Those types of relationships are very important. So non-native people have to have a relationship with us in order to do that. And we need to welcome that relationship in order to embrace humankind and, 
find those solutions to the problems in the environment right now. If you want to learn, you will come to me in a respectful way and say, I am, I am interested in learning about your culture. You will come to me in a respectful way and say, what is, where did you come from and how did you get to where you are right now? I fought long and hard to know who I am. I fought long and hard to be part of this country. 20 years of my life I gave to this country. I'm here as a vendor. I've been vending um, my father's teachings and wares since 1992 when I retired from the military. So therefore, I came here today and all the powwows since to help everyone who comes through to understand that we are all one people, that we have one purpose, and that is to find our spirit, no matter what it looks like, and to call on the creation, no matter what that looks like, and to be safe in the hands and the arms of creation. The great spirit, the great mystery, our great mother, Jesus Christ himself. All of these are important. Well, I think that, you know, it, you know people just get educated, uh, on, on native culture, on native, especially native ceremonies, and respect them. And if they find out that there's going to be a native ceremony thing, you know, you need, they need to respect this, you know, the ceremony. Well, for one, I, I would like the legacy to continue. You know, we, we, and, and even, and even, uh, our ceremonies. I mean, we we teach our younger people how to conduct the, how to conduct the ceremony, so they can do that. Because we all realize that we're not going to last forever. It's important for Guabaltecan children to know who they are, because these are the future that I'm talking about that are going to save humankind. I see um, Native people, Indigenous people in the Americas having a relationship with all Indigenous people on Mother Earth. I have seen all different colors and cultures coming to my drumming circles and bringing their children and bringing the little white child and the little black child and the little brown child and the little yellow child and me telling them, let them be in the circle. Let them know what it is to hear the drum. Let their spirits run so that they can go home and lend that same spirit to you. Otherwise, we stop existing as a people. We stop existing as, as indigenous people, we stop existing as Coahuatecas, we stop existing as uh, our true nature, but we're still, we have survived and, and I hope that, you know, we will continue forever.